It came out on Friday uh, uh, about Tuesday morning breakfast group uh, and Mr. Griggs be having a chance to make his presentation. And it, it, you know, it dawned on me when when I myself and Mr. Underwood and Mr. Wilson when we started this process back in 1996. And you just mentioned, you know, going back to 97 when we served on the transportation committee with Mike Foster. And and this is the only, I want everybody to know, this is probably the only such group like this in the entire country where, where you bring dialogue, public, private sector decision makers, it doesn't matter, Democrat, Republican, Senator will be able to tell you. We've had Klan members, we had Nation Islam members, it, it doesn't matter. We, we, we put the subject matter on the table. There was a group of Caucasians that attempted to replicate what we were doing just once a month um, at the old restaurant on uh, Kings, and they couldn't even do it once a month. So several of them started to join forces, you know, with us because you know we are open. Uh, Barrow Peacock, several entities from the Republican Party. We've never censured anybody, and we ain't gonna never censure anybody on what you gonna say. Mr. Grigsby gave a compelling case based on what he had to say, and he said he got down the rates. We don't censure anybody. And so from that overall standpoint, I wanted everybody to know that because Lord and I have been doing something for now well over a decade plus since we started this in 1996 to bring, how many times are you gonna get a chance to meet the mayor without going to pay 20 or $30 where you can actually have a conversation with him and ask questions? It really doesn't happen. So we've been doing this, and I want to thank Senator Pub publicly uh, for that because we laid that particular foundation. And, and Mayor, I want to ask you, because Brother Grigsby laid it out. If it's not race, because Joe Shannon wouldn't even let you talk. Mm, so, would <laughs> so if it's not race, since they're saying it's something else. Oh, and by the way, today please have at least the. Uh, uh, the account where the money is at, because that was one of the questions that um, John Settle brought up. We don't even know if the 53000 is real. So please at least have that at the hearing today so you can present that so we got that. But if it's not raised and it's something objective, can you please give me some perspective as to what else it would be if it's not raised? Well, uh, I, I think this is a problem that is, is probably both black and green, uh, no doubt. Uh, Mr. Grigsby uh, is um, essentially a historic figure uh, with regard to the financial services industry. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the, uh, the, the, the first African American uh, to be able to do what he does. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a, a Jackie Robinson and a Kurt mm -hmm. Flood uh, and a Hank Aaron, mm -hmm. kind of all rolled into one. <laughs> uh, and and uh, he is doing so in an area uh, that has been uh, one of the most exclusive mm -hmm. of exclusive clubs in the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you when you talk about uh, folks who deal in high finance uh, dollars, not just in terms of hundreds of thousands of millions, but billions mm -hmm. of dollars, uh, that is a club of individuals that is very small, mm -hmm. very exclusive. Mm -hmm. uh, and Mr. Grigsby, uh, his history is one where he has come in and essentially empowered mayors and others to be able to have access to that with a level of transparency that allows you to be able to advance and pursue the interests of the people who sent you there to represent them and not to serve the interests of the folks who are there necessarily just trying to make money. Right. He's also done that in a fashion that has said, let me share these mysteries with other people mm -hmm. so that we can no longer have this to be the monochromatic set of circumstances that it is. And we're going to reach out and we're going to open up this pool of opportunity to the Alex Washingtons and the, mm -hmm. the, the, the Shante Wells and the, uh, the Jackie Scotts. Uh, and even here in terms of Shreveport, the, the George Mills and, and the, uh, the Ron Wings, uh, Sharika uh, Fields, a girl who uh, is a, a product of this community, graduate of Huntington High School a 3.7 magna cum laude graduate of Centenary College in Finance, who when I became mayor, was teaching dance. Oh, she couldn't get a, she couldn't get a job in finance? Industry. Could not wow. do a job in the wow. finance industry wow. in Shreveport. Uh, when Calvin Grigsby came to town, 
He said, I'm coming to town not only to do work for the city of Shreveport, I'm coming to the city of Shreveport to open an office. I'm looking to staff that office. And I'm looking to, to serve the city of Shreveport well. And I want to use that as the basis of being able to go out to other communities across this state and be able to make a case for why it is that I should have a chance to be able to compete for that business as well. And so he began to teach this industry to Sharika Fields. Mm, mm, uh, and after having done outstanding work here in Shreveport, they began to venture off uh, and to work with other communities across this state uh, and do things that were very upsetting to other people. Uh, because not only did he do them well, he did them very cost effectively. I'll uh, give you an example for, uh, for, for comparison and contrast. Uh, in six plus years of work for the city of Shreveport, uh, Mr. Grigsby earned a total of $1.2 million in fees. Mm -hmm. Now some would think that's a, a significant number, mm -hmm. but when you look at the level and quality of work, uh, it's actually uh, rather below average. Mm -hmm. When you look at it in comparison, because we were only able to find two years worth of records for uh, my predecessor, mm -hmm. and just two years worth of records that we were able to compile, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The same work that Mr. Grigsby did for $1.2 million mm -hmm. over six years, the predecessors folks did it over two years for $2.8 million. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what you can find. Mm -hmm. That's what I can find. Now, there's another six years that we have no mm -hmm. ability to be able to go back and find. Uh, certainly the person who takes my place will be able to have everything from the first day to the last day. But we were only able to find two years worth, and those two years were $2.8 million. So Mr. Grisman did for 1.2, and somebody else did for 2.8, that's $1.6 million less. And so not only do you have, I think, a desire on the part of folks who are within this industry to keep it the way it's always been, mm -hmm. uh, but then also folks don't like you coming in uh, and, and, and sharing with people that there are more cost-effective ways in which these things can be done. Uh, in fact, if you go back and what we did go back and examine were the council minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. when these transactions took place under the previous administration and previous council. And we looked for uh, dialogue, uh, discussion, debate as those things came up. And there was virtually none. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in our case, in almost every instance, not only did we have substantial discussion and dialogue during the actual council meeting themselves, but there were instances where Mr. Grigsby and his team came in along with Sharika and we actually had to go through the uh, process, step by step, issue by issue, action by action, mm -hmm. with council members prior to council work session and council meetings so that they would fully be aware of and understand exactly what it is that we were attempting to do. One, that was the right thing to do, but two, we also understood that the level of trust mm -hmm. that was different uh, between what was being given and extended uh, to uh, the previous folks and what was being afforded to us. And Absolutely. so we, we welcome that. So. Uh, to whatever extent it's a color, uh, an issue of color, it's also a collection, uh, an issue of money. Absolutely. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, I uh, thank you for recognizing that I do host uh, an online blog. I don't write all of the articles, though, as you know. Uh, I, I will say this. I thank you very much this morning for bringing some facts to people. I think the rhetoric was toned back quite a bit this morning where race seemed to become too much of an issue before. And I don't think anyone benefits from that being the central point of what needs to be serious discussion. I know that I have several college degrees and I still don't understand all of the high finance that are involved, but I do understand terms and I try to address things methodically one at a time that I do address. My original question was in two press releases you talked about an escrow account. An escrow account by definition you said this morning is only existing when the other side accepts the name and there is no single control of that account. In fact, now you're saying maybe there wasn't a true escrow account, there was an account. Is that correct? Oh, Ms. Marks, let, let, let me start from the beginning. Uh, and, and, and the unfortunate thing uh, about the racial references, uh, as limited as they were uh, by Mr. Griffin in his presentation, uh, unfortunately, uh, the thing I realized as soon as they were made, that, that was going to ultimately end up being the lead yeah. of everything that was done. Mm -hmm. yes, yeah. uh, uh, because that's the nature of the media. Let's take that which is salacious uh, and, and, and provocative 
uh, and we'll lead with that, uh, and, and the, the substance gets lost. Mm -hmm. And so, so you, no one benefits from the discussion when you've lost the substance. No, no, but you guys bring it out. But now, but now, but now also, 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 what, what this community needs and what this country needs is an honest, direct, right. frank dialogue right. about issues of race. Absolutely. And simply right. ignoring race Absolutely. will not make it go away. Absolutely. Uh, and so th there are things that as a community, as a city, that we do need to talk about and, and talk about how race influences and impacts those. Uh, the cover story on Atlantic Magazine this month uh, that was in fact very shocking uh, to me. Uh, unfortunately, I think the great substance of much of what's in that article is going to be lost because the last line of it talks about reparations. Uh, but everything that comes before it talks about those things that happened not just during slavery, but those things that happened 100 years ago, 50 years ago, 25 years ago, and a year ago that are still impacting the racial dynamic in this country today. And those are issues, Mr. Mark, uh, that we have got to be willing to engage and discuss and do so in a way that says more light than heat. But now that's a very difficult thing to do, uh, but it's one that I don't uh, shirk away from. Uh, but now, with regard to uh, the, the account, uh, as I stated, Mr. Grigsby deposited in November of last year $50,500 into an account, a Capital One in downtown Shreveport. We took action on the resolution that would have allowed us to be able to resolve this matter uh, through uh, arbitration, I believe in December. It was a passage of that resolution that would have created the scenario where the city of Shreveport would have attached his name to the account and we would have engaged in the arbitration process. And at that point, it would have become an escrow. Account. It would have, in fact, at yeah, that point, it, in it, fact, become an you, yeah. you can't enter into a contract with yourself. But you. You should never have called it an escrow guy, and that's what uh, that, people that, latch on to terms. Uh, that, that's that, that's semantics again. If, if, if you stay focused on the substance, Absolutely. as opposed to the semantics, we will we will be able to make progress. For folks who are looking for gotcha moments, yeah, then you'll get some minor gotcha moment that gets you distracted away mm -hmm. from the real. So you got to get situation. beyond them. You've got to say, okay, the term was wrong. The point was he tried to make a good faith effort and you're latching onto that. And that's what we need to deal with rather than the term. Well, it would become an escrow, it would become, from my perspective, it's an escrow account when I put $50,000 into it and say, let's go engage in an arbitration process. All you need to do is step forward. Absolutely. Because you didn't even need the resolution. You didn't even need the resolution for us to do that. What you needed was a council willing to say, Absolutely. Mayor, Absolutely. let's go resolve this issue through this particular process. We agree with that. No need for resolution. It, it, let's make this happen. Is it true that if you had had the authority to establish an account, you could have said it is an escrow account because it's then in the city's name? But as I understand it, only the well, city council can do that. I'm not going to that. go and, and have the city's name unilaterally placed on an account. Mm -hmm. You well, can't. Got, it's well, against the law. Isn't well, it? But whether I could or not, I'm not going to do so in a way that when I do not have a consensus from the city council right. that says that they're willing to join me in resolving this issue in this way. That's and so it. now I've taken somebody's sense. money that is theirs and theirs alone. Right. I've placed the city's name on it. That's and it. now we have a conflict now over how to resolve the, the escrow account. So right. we got a, 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 a conflict over an account that was set up to try and, and solve a conflict. Right. So again, as I say, Mr. Mr. Mark, you can choose to major in the model. You can choose to look for gotcha moments. Uh, I stay focused on the substantive issues that are at work here that allow us to be able to resolve them and go forward. You can sit there all day and nitpick and, pump and, and scratch and everything else, but the, the truth of the matter is, is that uh, Mr. Grigsby stepped forward uh, and put that those dollars into uh, an account at a bank in Shreveport, uh, at a bank that the city of Shreveport uses for its operational accounts, uh, with the desire for us to resolve this matter uh, through that mechanism. Uh, and we could not manage to be able uh, to get the support necessary to be able to do that and move forward. For the last one, then, uh, yeah, I'm going to take this off right quick. you the one that's got the blog. I host it. Okay, fine. Yeah. Did you put on your blog about how much money Grisby saved the city? 
I, I don't I, write I, all I, the articles. I don't know. I don't know every article. I'm just asking the question. No, 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 you don't no, have to ask. I don't I'm just know. You don't know. Right. Come on. Come on. Mayor, yes, you hit a wrong home run when you got Grisby. Sure Shreveport, Shreveport mm -hmm. is going to be an Afro-American city. But, but the millionaires, if you look at the lawyers in this city that's up here at Commercial National Bank, you'll see 20 names on the side of there. Uh, a hit, you know what I'm talking about. Let a hit. They're making money, been making money. The next person that's gonna possibly be an Afro-American needs to keep Mr. Grizzly. That's right. What they wanna do is they wanna muddy the water so Grizzly will get out of here and they free him to come back. Cause if he's the only one that's doing it in the state, that means the good old boy system is coming back to town. And they're gonna do a hatchet job on you so they can run him out of town so he won't ever do anything else for the city of Shreveport. I'll, I know the tactics that they do. We just don't understand since we're gonna be in charge. Now, Shreveport's son did a detail thing for Mr. Grizzly. That up. That upset a lot of white folks in this city. So what we need to do as black folks, we got no radio station, no TV station on our side. Three Post Sun is the only way we can get our message. We need to get behind Three Post Sun if we don't like to read it, buy it any way to keep the circulation up. We may disagree with it, but, but that's the only outlet we got because ain't nobody on uh, KOK, uh, what that other station? We K O, not what the black station that. K O T J. Nobody talk about politics no. without basically. If we don't have an outlet to get our word out, because the three post times say, "Look, we ain't, we ain't got time to print that, so that's it. You can't get your message out." Yeah. The dollars that you saved, can you imagine what you would have been up being Afro American? first black mayor, they would have chopped your head off. And that's what this Tea Party thing that they doing to Obama. Mm -hmm. They doing the same hatchet mm -hmm. job on him. Mm -hmm. And it works because they think we are so divided as a race of people that they can slip in, do a little, throw a few words over here, get us all confused, mm -hmm. in fighting and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And they run away with the money. Okay. So what we got to do is keep it simple, teach our people, so we can run this city, and guess what? Last thing, is when you look at Shreveport Tire <coughs> on this exclusive area in the uh, Carwell, you see it for sale $1.9 million houses. You know that black, black folks buy that kind of house? So they ain't talking about us. We are thinking to stop all this runaway spending in Shreveport. And these white folks is mad with us for that. Okay. Thank okay. you, sir. Uh, well, May, uh, and then boss. Thank you, thank you, uh, Mayor Glover, for coming out and articulating the way you have uh, and the way Grigsby have to bring some enlightenment to this situation. It is appalling, and it should be with every citizen in this city should be outraged because the fact of the matter is is that we have a group of council members that has decided that they're going to dictate to you and to this city how this money should be held up or should be spent. They're trying to delay it until the next administration. We voted for the bond proposal, $175 million. We know all black folks didn't vote for it. There were some blacks and whites. The community collectively voted for that. So now, and, and, and this, is, this, is, this is what boggles me every time, because when we begin to speak truth about the component now, we know that there was an internal audit and an external audit that was done. Nothing came back. So if you have no basis for the reason why you are doing this, what is your purpose or motive for doing it? If, we, if it's not racially motivated. Because when I stood before the council while you was trying to speak and Joe Shine and the rest of the council members, 
did not allow you to articulate this thing to the public so that the public can know what's going on. I was sad as a pastor, as a spiritual leader, that the mayor of this city and Mr. Grigsby have saved this city the kind of money that we that we have been saved, that have been saved. So now, my thing is, is that we can get caught up in words, we can get caught up in all this uh, gotcha moments, but the fact of the matter is, the citizens of this city voted for the largest bond proposal in the history of this city. And so now we're going to allow the council to hold us up from projects that's moving forward because they want you out and they want Mr. Grigsby out. Let me do this right quick. Let me do this right quick. Who knows? I played football for Huntington. And my coach taught us. You're going to switch quarterbacks in the fourth quarter of the game, especially when you win it. Come on, man. So that, 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 that's my take on all that, Mary. You're doing a good job, man. Thank you, Pastor. To leave Mr. Grigsby and yourself out of it, do we have a rule in, in the city government that we cannot do further business with a business or an individual if there's some uh, contention on money's owed? You have an ordinance that says yes, that if, if an individual uh, is deemed to owe the city money, uh, then you cannot uh, do business with them. And, uh, and but, but that ordinance has provisions uh, for it to be suspended. Uh, and so it, it could be suspended, but there is a provision. Oh, there, absolutely. In fact, it's been, it's been suspended as recently as last year. Uh, and there are folks who receive paychecks for the city of Shreveport that if that uh, uh, particular ordinance were uh, enforced strictly would not receive their paychecks. And, and so it's one that uh, that obviously has. Uh, I mean, they, they could suspend that. That vision could be suspended, but there is a provision. Correct. And, especially, and especially when the actual basis of the debt is one that is as contrived uh, as this one is. You see, the, the last Channel Three story uh, that ran. You know, well, that's a that subjective. That that's if, I mean, your opinion, obviously. That well, no, no. You've taken that position. No, no, no. no. You make Bob, These are these are fees that were reviewed by not only my office, they were reviewed by the city council and their staff. They were reviewed and signed off by the city attorney, by the finance director, and by the state of Louisiana. It was only in the aftermath of actually having performed the duties and having been paid, did the city council come back and say, no, we want to re-examine, re, re -look, and now we decide, based upon whatever motivation we may have, that now we believe that fifty-three thousand dollars is owed. So you're challenging the merits of the, their contention, but my question is, and you made a, a strong case for Mr. Grigsby's accomplishments for the city. I mean, did he earn the money that he, you know, that he charged? Um, has has there ever, ever been any allegations made in the council by any of the councilmen? That Mr. Grigsby's work was not of quality. Not but, that we've heard. No, no in fact, I, we have gotten. No, I, I mean, I have been asking. Absolutely. In fact, the, the, the council has been, uh, I think, in some instances, grudgingly so, uh, complimentary of, yeah, of yeah, the work right. that has been, in fact, done. In fact, I mean, to, to sit here today and to find us where we were, and to now see where we are, to know that as the first African American mayor of the city of Shreveport, one who was said and predicted by many that we were going to end up making Shreveport the next Detroit. Uh, when we came into office, uh, the general obligation bond millages for the city of Shreveport uh, were almost 28%. And no one can test that. Those same millages now are 22. Right. No one can test that. So in other words, they're not saying anything. They're, they're, the, the, the other side of this coin is not saying that Mr. Grigsby has not performed services. He didn't perform them up to, to, to their standards. Other, the, the, the contention but, is we have a issue with billing. If well, you had a plumber, no, 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 no. What you have, from, from, as, as I have seen in Wilmington, okay. you have an issue uh, by several council members uh, who I believe uh, have been motivated by mm -hmm. folks mm -hmm. outside of mm -hmm. the city who have an interest mm -hmm. in trying to mm -hmm. get back Absolutely. Mm -hmm. the opportunity to manage these types of operations Absolutely. for the city. Mm -hmm. uh, and they That's want to be the ones who mm -hmm. do this business uh, as opposed to Mr. Grigsby. Uh, because these are selections 
Mr. Grigsby represents as much a part of the team of people that I bring together uh, to do the business of the administration as the council staff, Arthur Thompson and his Graham represents as theirs. And so what they have essentially done is interjected themselves into what is the province of the administration mm -hmm. and, and told me that I cannot pick and make use of Absolutely. someone who is duly qualified, proven to do work that has benefited the city of Shreveport. That's wrong. So to summarize that, you're saying this group of unnamed individuals that have got us well, down, got us in the hole. No, I, not, I, not, I can not, name them. I can name them. Well, well I, what, no, what I'm saying, if, just if I can hear it clearly, is that the, these group of individuals that got us in the hole, $650 million worth, for their own maybe financial gain or own motivations, are angry because yes. Mr. Grigsby cleaned it up yeah, and, 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 ruined, and ruined their part. There you go. Oh, you're right. I'm just listening. Those, 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 are folks, those are folks, again, going back to, 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 to what I said. All right. Dutch Morial became mayor of the city of New Orleans in 1978. Mm. Kip Holden became mayor of Baton Rouge in 2005. Abe Pierce became mayor of, of Monroe in 1999. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I became mayor of Shreveport in 2006. There's nobody who looks like Mr. Grigsby who has served yeah. in this role mm -hmm. in the state of Louisiana mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. until I became mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, not only did he come in, he came in and he's done a job extremely well. Mm -hmm. He's opened it up. So you end up with folks like Sharika and Shante and Alex and others mm -hmm. have a chance that they will learn. Uh, Shante, Alex, and uh, uh, Jackie Scott represent the only African Americans in this state who have served in the capacity of lead bond counsel mm -hmm. uh, in the state of Louisiana, a state that is over 200 years old right. and has had leadership that looks like me at the largest cities across this state. And so yes, this is an area uh, that represents uh, an opportunity for people to generate great income and, and build great wealth. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you look at a place like Shreveport, Bob, one of the challenges that we have uh, is not only do we have limited numbers of jobs, good paying jobs, like you had the benefit of working uh, at GM and, and, and what have you, we also lack a significant number of entrepreneurs Absolutely. and professionals uh, occupying the various quarters of power across this city. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you get outside of government uh, and you go into the senior management of our banks, of our insurance companies, mm -hmm. of our utility companies, it. mm -hmm. it's a very monochromatic environment. That's right. That's uh, That's and so true. if we expect Shreveport to be able to come uh, a better and greater city, then we've got to learn the lessons. When you see me talk about Shreveport being the next great city in the South, that goes back to 1973 mm -hmm. and Maynard Jackson in the city of Atlanta where he said uh, to the business community in that city that if we want to grow mm -hmm. and become the capital of the New South mm -hmm. and beat because all those cities from mm -hmm. Atlanta to Birmingham to New Orleans <coughs> to Shreveport to Mobile to Little Rock all were approximately the same size. The question was in the post Jim Crow era which one was going to emerge mm -hmm. as the beacon of the New South. Mm -hmm. Maynard said the way we do that is by bringing half of our community into the economic mainstream, giving them access to opportunity that others in this city have thought to be their own, and only their own. And it doesn't end up being a zero-sum game at that point. It ends up being a situation where you end up growing Absolutely. the overall pie right. itself and it becomes a larger, deeper pool of opportunity. So yes, in addition to keeping Shreveport safe, in addition to managing our finances effectively, it's also a part of my agenda as mayor of this city to be able to see it grow at every level and every dimension mm -hmm. so that we don't end up sending all of our children, black mm -hmm. and white, male and female, as exports Absolutely. to the Atlantas, right. to the Dallases, to the right. Houstons, and to the other places around this country and around this world when we need to be providing real opportunity to them here. Mm -hmm. Let me give you another example. Prior to me becoming mayor of the city of Shreveport, <coughs> There was one African-American engineer yep. north of Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. One young lady from the Cooper Road, Tanita yeah. Baker. Now that number is over a half dozen. Why? <laughs> Not because we have discriminated against anybody else, right. but it's because we have shifted the paradigm mm. and said, let's mm. make this a broader pool of opportunity, bring more people in and give more people access to opportunity. So that now an individual who grows up in this city 
it ends up being from the Cooper Road of Hollywood or City Grove in Moortown that has for, uh, a, a talent for math can go and get that STEM education and actually see Shreveport as a place Absolutely. where that talent can be manifested and lived out and not end up populating and benefiting some other community, Bob. Yeah. If we want Shreveport to be a better place, Absolutely. then folks like you who claim to be a progressive Democrat need to understand and embrace those things and not end up being an obstacle to it. Right. Do you see this disparity, this racial disparity limited to Shreveport or is it in Northwest Louisiana as well? Well, it's throughout the country. It's throughout the country. So you, I'm but, saying but that now, in our home, and, and this is our area, this is where we, country, we can't but, solve but now, all now, let, let, me, let me tell you one of the areas of points of growth that we have made as a community. Uh, and, and I credit uh, the folks at the Committee of 100 uh, for coming to this understanding that many of us who have been saying for a very long time that the lack of a professional and entrepreneurial class in the minority community equates into one of our biggest challenges. Absolutely. Right. And that fell on deaf ears for a very long time. To their credit, the Committee of 100, the Ashton Council, finally began to give ear to that. Now, they wouldn't take my word for it. They went out, brought in somebody from more than 50 miles away with a briefcase, paid them some money, had them do a study, and they determined that Shreveport represents one of the areas in the country where you have one of the largest gaps in terms of wealth between the black community and the white community. And that wealth gap accounts for why it is that you end up seeing an inability of, of, of this community to rise economically. When you have so many people who are poor, mm. then they don't buy the bigger and better cars. They don't buy the bigger and better homes. They don't buy the better and more expensive clothes. And so if you want to see the overall economic tide of Shreveport, Northwest Louisiana rise, then we need to work towards building up and improving and elevating the professional and entrepreneurial classes all around, but specifically within the minority community. Out of that understanding came the Minority Supply Institute, of which the city of Shreveport funds to the tune of $100,000 per year. Others do the same as well. David Aubrey is the head of it. They are in the process right now, in conjunction with what we do uh, through the Fair Share Program, of helping to build and grow and expand and elevate that professional uh, and entrepreneurial class within the African American community. That is something that will inure to the benefit, not just of the African American community in this city, but to the entirety of the city. Because the overall level of wealth will increase. There will be more individuals to call upon for leadership, to be able to serve, whether it's an elective office or uh, as the heads of uh, various nonprofit boards and commissions and what have you. It makes us a better place. It gives opportunity and hope to our children to not just be born and raised here and to go off and get an education, but to do that, come back home and be able to build a future for themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, Mayor, be before Sister Margaret died, she asked me to do a racism mm -hmm. workshop with her and her closest 20 Caucasian colleagues. And I'm gonna, today I'm gonna bring the note that she hand wrote. And I'm gonna bring that as a copy today for the council. And she said, Craig, Thanks for helping me work beyond my racism. Mm -hmm. The funniest thing about Shreveport, and I got back here in 1994, and I know Bob, and I know Mary, and I know uh, John Settle. Caucasians refuse, no matter how progressive they think they may be, they don't want to deal with the reality of race because it makes them feel funny. But I live in a black neighborhood. I don't know what you're saying. It doesn't matter about where you live. This, see, this is real simple. See, because I've had a good chance to be off and, and go some places. So when when Cedric talks about Maynard Jackson, and you know this to be fact, when Maynard Jackson took office, the Caucasian community of Atlanta had the same mentality of the so-called progressive Caucasians in Shreveport. They weren't progressive. And when Maynard took office, he said, that black folks were going to get 45% of every dollar that came through that city, number one. Number two, he said that Herman J. Russell was going to build Hartsfield Airport. And those white folks said, over our dead body. And, and he said it again, that they're, he's going to build it. What has happened from 1974, and I'm not going to go up to 2014 in just 40 years, but from 74 to 1996, because I got back here in 94, and I was staying in Atlanta. But from 74 to 96, 
Atlanta was only at that time 22 years old in its present state on a black mayor. They got the world's largest tourism event, which is the World Olympics, marketed as a black city. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why Atlanta is the quintessential city in the world now, because it markets diversity. And what Cedric is talking about, you grow the pie. But before Griggs became all of this corruption was going on, I brought it to the table mm -hmm. anyway, mm -hmm. because ain't nobody, John Settle, even my good partner, Marion, nobody brought out the fact that under Keith Hightower's administration, 1,600 acres of land was, was leased for a dollar an acre, <laughs> and I didn't even know Mr. Grigsby was doing the analysis on all of this, but they went and flipped that that land and got $80 million. Mm -hmm. They were white folks. Oh, yeah. Criminal white folks. And that's the bottom line about the situation. And so this city has grown so accustomed to stepping in fashion Negroes, criminal folks, including Joe Shine. And I will say this on public record because Joe got a federal, please record this. Joe took a federal, he got a federal charge, he's a felon, for accepting a bribe, a bribe for $1,500. And he now works with the Republican Party to now cause, cast dispersions on the first black person to do municipal financing in America? And he accepted a $1,500 bribe? One department. Excuse me? Wasn't he pardoned? He was oh, pardoned by the Republicans, yeah, and as a byproduct part. of that, he's working with them right now <laughs> to hold up bond <laughs> issues so he can get out of office and Calvin Grigsby <laughs> can roll. The Caucasian community of this city refuses to deal with intelligent, mm -hmm. courageous black mm -hmm. folks. And let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. I got a vested interest in Shreveport because my uncle started part of the city, Giles D. Moore and Moore Town. So I can speak on this issue. They want stepping and fetching handkerchief head Negroes that will say yes sir, boss sir, do nothing and give them trinkets. Mm -hmm. If the city is gonna grow, you gotta have courageous black folks who will start businesses, who will build education, and guess what? White folks are gonna benefit as well cause the pie is gonna grow. There have been many issues that I've seen different than Cedric. But on the dog park issue <laughs> and this issue, <laughs> me too. I ride and die. Let's thank the man for coming out. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to be there this afternoon. Thank you all so much. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, We're coming, brother. I, I appreciate it. And, and, and in fact, the, the thing that I, I want to share with you guys, because you know, as, as the uh, uh, mayor of the city, you know, I, I, I tell people, uh, it's my duty to, re to represent the entirety of the city. Uh, the reason as to why I ran for mayor uh, in Shreveport in 2006 was because I felt that I could be that one mayor, uh, one candidate who could in fact represent all of the city uh, and bring a perspective, uh, one that had not been uh, given the kind of consideration uh, and deliberation uh, that was needed in order to be able to make us that better city uh, that Craig is talking about. Uh, but one of the things uh, that, that maybe uh, I should have done more of uh, is giving us uh, an opportunity uh, to engage in, in this issue of race that seems to make uh, so many uncomfortable. In fact, I can tell you, I was uh, touched uh, several months ago uh, uh, at uh, one of the Aspen Ideas festivals that was put on uh, by the Community Foundation. Uh, and uh, part of it uh, uh, had to do with uh, uh, jail sentences and, and, and what have you. Uh, and after it was over, uh, Henry Walker, local attorney, uh, came up to me and said, Cedric, uh, as the mayor of this city, you need to do something uh, about all of the black males in this city uh, who are being negatively impacted uh, by the way in which uh, some of the narcotic laws are being affected. Uh, they're being uh, enforced uh, in an inconsistent fashion uh, that's resulting in more young males of color uh, ending up in the criminal justice system when it's clearly been documented that the rates of usage are consistent in both communities. That you have a 75% use rate use rate amongst white youth, the 75% use rate 
amongst black youth, but black youth end up constituting somewhere close to 80% of all those individuals who are ultimately uh, arrested, indicted, uh, and put into the criminal justice system uh, for those types of offenses. Uh, the reality of that was driven uh, home even further uh, just this past week uh, as I sat and listened uh, to an alcohol revocation hearing uh, before the city council. Uh, and it was an actual revocation that I signed off on uh, and fully supported. I uh, read the details of it, and I guess uh, it, it read uh, less uh, significantly than uh, it actually ended up being when I heard it spoken. Uh, and that is that we had an individual in this city uh, who was arrested uh, at the time possessing 19 pounds of marijuana, uh, had a complete growing cultivation uh, and distribution operation, uh, was in the possession of more than a dozen illegal weapons, mm -hmm. uh, also had some Schedule Three narcotics and ended up with a total of seven charges. Mm -hmm. All right, now this individual also had uh, a liquor license. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason for the hearing was because they wanted to appeal the revocation of their liquor license mm -hmm. uh, before the city council. As I listened to that and I heard all of those charges, I mean, this was a major <coughs> narcotics distributor. Mm. That individual case ended up being adjudicated with six of those seven charges being dismissed. Mm. He pled to one count of possession with intent. Uh, received a five year uh, at hard labor jail sentence, a prison mm. sentence with all five years suspended. Yeah. Ultimately got two years of supervised probation. Yeah. That spoke to me in a way that mm. was extremely profound. Mm. Uh, when I think about all of the young people around this city, who I know every day find themselves ensnared within the criminal justice system for doing wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, and as I say to them on a consistent basis, if you go uh, and you make uh, Cooper Road or Queensboro or Hollywood or City Grove or Sunset Acres or wherever uh, a less peaceful, desirable place to live, then I got a problem with it. Mm -hmm. But at the same token, if I have any expectation of those folks having faith and confidence in our system, then that system has got to be fair and it's got to be consistent. And when I find many of those folks finding themselves uh, being jailed, unable to make bond, or having to choose between bonding out or hiring competent counsel because the public defender's office is so sorely underfunded. It tells me that we have issues in this community. Uh, and they're the same issues that exist across this country, but there are issues that we still need to be willing to come to the table and engage in an open, honest, substantive dialogue about in a way that will make us all uncomfortable. Absolutely. Uh, right. Because Craig is right, many of you are right, is that we oftentimes end up avoiding mm -hmm. issues That's it. Yeah. that we need to give mm -hmm. some time and attention to. Not just simply because we want to start something, mm -mm. but because we need to make ourselves a better community. Right. We can make ourselves a better community by sitting together, engaging in these dialogues, mm -hmm. and allowing that to lead us towards trying to ultimately have a better system that is fair and just for everybody. Absolutely. I thank you all for your time. Thank you, Mayor. Quick, quick, come out quick, 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 quick thing, Mayor. We've been at this hotel now since 2008, and I got to give, they're, they're in the process of getting their flagship back. Um, you see all of the work that they've been doing around. I got to do this while you're here.